Our first question is from Jamil A144. What are the top three or four supplemental exercises you can do to boost your overall deadlift deadlift strength? Oh, there you go. Ooh. You know, um, I'm going to give you some exercises that have worked a lot for clients um, and then exercises that work really well for advanced lifters. And these are two sometimes different categories of lifts because I think advanced lifters – We've been working out for a while. They tend to focus on things like uh, lifting off of blocks or using things like bands and right. chains. But for the average lifter, oftentimes uh, there's either an imbalance or a weakness in the in the whole you know chain of muscles that's trying to deadlift. One exercise that remarkably tends to boost people's deadlifts: single leg deadlifts. Yes. Yep. Just a, I'm glad you went there. Just first. a good old single leg deadlift with dumbbells, or even starting with body weight, getting really good at it, and then adding weight with dumbbells. You would be surprised at how stable and strong you felt with your traditional deadlift after practicing single leg deadlifts. For I would while. challenge advanced lifters there too. Hmm. I, I I think that I probably think that's a no brainer. Yeah, it's an ego thing why they avoid it. Exactly because it's you know okay if I'm a 500 pound deadlifter to go grab 100 pound dumbbells and do a single. You're leg to be able to do it. Well, yeah, most the, most guys won't. Right, that'll be hard. That's yeah. hard as shit, and then that's humbling, right? So you have to go grab 60s and start with 60s and work your way up. Mm -hmm. But I think some of the best I ever felt deadlifting was when I was simultaneously also including heavy single leg deadlift. I, I just felt like you said you feel yeah. so stable and strong lifting. Yeah, like that. I think another one though, like specifically as it pertained to what I was dealing with with my QL and um, you know that slight shift left to right. I think a lot of lifters don't really consider. Uh, I would take a, a heavy dumbbell or a heavy kettlebell, and I would do like a suitcase carries oh, yeah. uh, down and back, and just really kind of working on uh, you know making sure that my body is able to fully uh, stabilize and I can activate my obliques and, and, and keep everything. Thing uh, centered as much as possible. Yeah, along ladder, those ladder lines. Stability. Yeah, yeah. Stability. And along those lines, um, heavy farmer walks. Heavy yeah. farmer walks with a trap bar or with dumbbells. I always feel so much more solid and strong in my deadlifts when I incorporate those into my workouts. Another one is good mornings. Mm -hmm. Done properly, good mornings really work on that hip hinge and hip extension and that stabilization. Um, of the lower spine. And then another, here's an exercise a lot of people don't even realize can actually improve your deadlift windmills. Mm. Just uh, working up to a weighted windmill where you actually have weight in the arm that's straight up in the air and where you can go down and twist to help with that lateral stability, which a lot of people get, this is how they hurt themselves when they deadlift is that the, the weight shifts just a little bit. They don't have the lateral stability to support the weight that they're lifting and they hurt themselves or their body, because remember, your body oftentimes will prevent itself from lifting more weight because of its 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 own fear of injury. So you may actually have the strength to lift more or possess the strength to lift more, but your body's not allowing you to uh, to get it. It's not allowing you to to tap into it because it's a safety it, mechanism. It's a safety mechanism. Another great hip thrust. All oh, right, hip thrust. Yeah. Uh, one of the so when I'm working with someone on a deadlift. Um, one of the hardest things is to get them to understand that this is we're trying to generate power from the hips mm -hmm. and you're thrusting forward in a deadlift. You're not lifting the bar up because it looks like to the average person when you look at a deadlift, it's like, oh, you bend over, you pick the yeah. bar up. You're picking it up with your upper body. Right. When it's really it's a it's a lever exercise. Yeah, I imagine I'm pushing my feet through the floor mm -hmm. and hips forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're thrusting the hips forward. Uh -huh. And so good old hip thrust are a great way to get people to really understand the the mechanics of what you're trying to do because you're you're opposing gravity in a hip thrust. It's much easier for them to understand, oh, I'm driving the hips up in the air, squeezing the glutes. But that's exactly what you're trying to do when you're doing a deadlift and you get into that hinged position is you're thrusting the hips forward instead of up like on a hip thrust. So working on your hip thrust mechanics and getting really good and strong doing a hip thrust will carry over into a deadlift many times for for most people, even advanced lifters. If you get if you progress your hip thrust and you start hip thrusting, you know, four or five hundred plus pounds, uh, you'll see a nice carryover into your deadlift. And for sure for uh, beginner lifters, I think that's a great exercise. And then finally, uh, squats, barbell squats. You know, it's funny. I've had it, and I've seen this many times where my deadlift numbers will go up, but my squat numbers don't. Rarely does the reverse happen for me. My squat goes up. Typically, my deadlift numbers go up again uh, as well. So, and again, this depends on the lifter. Some people are better at squatting than they are at deadlifting, 
But if you're better at deadlifting than squatting, uh, or you feel much more comfortable deadlifting, try improving your squat and then watch what happens to your deadlift. 